Good morning and welcome to Lyndon B. Johnson High School. I am Armando Salazar, the proud principal, home of the Mighty Wolves. Please stand for the presentation of colors by the Johnson High School Junior ROTC program under the direction of retired Lieutenant Andrew Rodriguez and retired Petty Officer First Class Javier Tobias. The national anthem performed by the Mighty Johnson Band under the direction of Mr. Jose Valenzuela. The Pledge of Allegiance and the Texas Pledge will be recited by Kimberly Medina, Student Council President. Everyone, please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas one state, under God, one and indivisible. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. Now I would like to introduce our special guest joining us for this morning. First, we have Ms. Rebecca Cost Morales, Assistant Superintendent for Administration and Policies. Ms. Angelica Sanchez, Director of Career and Technology and UAL. Mr. Jaime Garza, Director of Section 504. Ms. Zaida Gonzalez, Director of Elementary Education. Ms. Nancy Brondo, Instructional Coordinator, Special Education. Dr. Julissa Liendo, Instructional Coordinator, Language Acquisition Program. Ms. Sara Hernandez, Coordinator for Federal Programs. Ms. Norma Flores, Migrant Recruiter for Federal Programs. I would also like to recognize some of our Johnson High School faculty and staff, if you may please rise. Stand, please.
Thank you. Our distinguished alumni, Cassandra Diaz, class of 2014. Eric Garay, class of 2014. Fernando Maciel, class of 2014. Jorge Castañeda, class of 2015. Natalie Coleman, class of 2016. Stephanie Palacios, class of 2017. Lance Corporal David Lee Espinosa, class of 2019. Please, let's give him a big round of applause. With us this morning are several individuals who were honored last night as our League of Legends Distinguished Alumni at a special ceremony held at the Alteza Events Reception Ceremony Center. Today, it brings me great honor to welcome them back to their alma mater. What is exactly a League of Legends? A distinguished League of Legends. What is it? Well, these are individuals that have done, what have these individuals done that covet this distinguished award? And how can you students become a distinguished legend? Well, to be in the United ISD League of Legends, you must have the distinct recognizable traits in the following areas. Citizenship, responsibility, respect, and trustworthiness. You must also have a sense of responsibility to the community that you serve and have a distinct performance in the career you have chosen. Now, all of these individuals have done all of these and more. So that I ask everyone to please give them your full attention as we award them with this honor. Good morning, my name is Ana Segovia and I am the senior class president, president. and this morning it is my pleasure to introduce Ms. Cassandra Diaz, LBJ alumni who graduated salutatorian <clears throat> with a GPA of 4.15 in 2014. <clears throat> Excuse me. During her four years in LBJ, Ms. Diaz was an involved student that not only dedicated herself to her studies in AP classes, but also was a member of several extracurricular activities. Ms. Diaz was a part of the National Honor Society Green Team, the Student Council, and held officer positions in Health Occupation Students of America, HOSA. She participated in HOSA's yearly competitions where she competed in medical terminology and current events. In NHS and Student Council, Ms. Diaz participated in several events and fundraisers that aided the community and helped her achieve recognition and scholarships. As a well-rounded student, Ms. Diaz was also a midfield soccer player for the four years she attended LBJ, advancing to the varsity team by her junior year. Upon graduation, she was a recipient of several awards due to her number two ranking, including the Mirbu B. Lamar Medal and the Sanchez Family Foundation Scholarship. Ms. Diaz went on to study nursing at TAMU, where she obtained her Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Canseco School of Nursing. She graduated with a GPA of 3.4. Upon graduating, she went on to pass her boards and became a reg registered nurse in June of 2018. She has now been a nurse for nearly five years with several specialties under her belt like PACU, Women's Health, Public Health Nursing, and Endoscopy. Currently, she is also the owner, together with her husband, of a coffee business called Aroma de Café, which has a five-star rating on Google and over 2,000 followers on Instagram. She is the mother of three beautiful children, and her husband is a fellow LBJ alumni and a registered nurse who is also one of this year's recipients of the League of Legends Award. Please help me welcome Ms. Cassandra Diaz to the podium.
Good morning, uh, LBJ students, staff, and guests. Uh, my name is Cassandra Diaz. Um, I re I'm a registered nurse and a business owner of Aroma de Café. Um, uh, I guess the point of my speech for you guys is to tell you all that, you know, never give up on yourself. Is it too low? Okay, thank you. Um, never give up on yourself, on your dreams. Um, I was one of y'all, basically, um, when I was in high school. Um, it's very important to be part of like clubs, uh, do like obviously your homework and get good grades, but it is possible to achieve everything that you, um, that you put your head um, on, right? Um, I had a kid uh, kind of young, but I was still able to get my bachelor's degree. I'm a registered nurse. I've worked in several um, uh, fields, and not only did I get to do my career, but I also was able and fortunate through my career to open my own business of coffee, which is something that I'm very passionate about and I love. Um, so, you know, it doesn't stop there. Whenever you get your, uh, your career, you can always expand into so many things. And even with nursing, um, it's, a, it's a job that's, that is always gonna be out there and you can always advance in so many uh, specialties. You can always advance to nurse practitioner or uh, CRNA, other uh, areas which are all very good uh, paying jobs and you know, be successful. So always try your best here in high school. Um, obviously, it's, it's good to have fun and to make memories, which I do feel like when I was here in LBJ, I had so much fun and um, all my friends, all my peers, you know, it was a, a great class and everything. Um, but also when it comes down to being responsible and um, having good grades and all of that, you know, just try hard and uh, study and you'll, you, you guys will be successful. It is possible for everyone, okay? No matter what challenges you might face, um, no matter what life throws at you, you, it's always possible to graduate, to have your degree, and to go on to follow your dreams, okay? Um, so thank you very much for this award. I'm very honored. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Andrea Cordova, Class of 2024 President. Today I have the honor of presenting Mr. Garay. Eric Garay is a 2014 graduate of Lyndon B. Johnson High School. While at LBG High School, Mr. Garay gained a four-year letterman in baseball, a three-year letterman in football, and track and field. Although his athletic accolades were extensive, his academic record were, was outstanding too. As Mr. Garay graduated with distinction as one of the top 10 of his class, Mr. Garay continued to pursue his love of baseball as he entered the Texas A&M International University baseball program as a pitcher. He was also a member of the National Criminal Justice Honor Society, Alpha Phi Sigma, and graduated cum laude with a Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice in 2017. As an undergraduate, Mr. Garay was a research assistant and completed an internship with the Webb County Sheriff's Department, where he facilitated the management of lawful documentary docu information, assessed and analyzed lawful arrest protocols along safety procedures, and evaluated the methodical measures of inmate handling and techniques within correctional facilities. In 2019, Mr. Garay received a Master of Business and Administration with a concentration in management. It was this same year that he became a Customs and Border Protection Officer with the Department of the Homeland Security, graduating top of his class. His roles were extensive as he was involved in investigations involving underage human trafficking, narcotics, and presided over the supervision of minors while evaluating their mental, physical, and emotional health in a federal facility. Mr. Garay has since returned on numerous occasions to his alma mater as a speaker on career day. He has also been invited to address our football team and has spoken about the importance of teamwork and perseverance. He is also a part of various outreach programs as, and is an active participant in the DHS CBP baseball team where he encourages healthy lifestyles. Outside of work, Mr. Garay is an animal lover. He continues to incorporate fitness into his daily life and enjoys gaming, playing guitar, and spending time with family and friends. Please help me welcome Mr. Garay to the podium.
All right, so I'm hoping you can y'all hear me? Yes, thumbs, thumbs up. All right, perfect. So good morning, guys. Uh, I'm Officer Gadai, okay? I graduated in 2014. I just want to say thank you to the faculty and staff, to our high school librarian, Raquel Ramon, and our principal, Salazar, who nominated me for this award. And the topic of my speech today is adaptability, perseverance, and handling adversity. All right, adversity is probably one of the things you're gonna see on a daily basis, guys, okay? But before I even get to that, I kinda wanna throw a little joke out there and see that like when I came in here, I have seen the nostalgia of LBJ not changing. I walk in and the first thing I see is someone at eight in the morning already having the bag of Flaming Hots with Limon and having that big red. So clearly that has not changed at all when I was here. So regarding adaptability and adversity, guys, all right? As you all heard from uh, the introduction, uh, I was an athlete at the school. I did four years of varsity. And two of those years, I ended up actually getting uh, a surgery on both of my knees, which kind of, you know, put me through a, a stage in my life that, you know, started making me realize that your athleticism in an athlete per, uh, persona is not gonna last that long. And it kind of started making me focus more on my academics. And I started realizing that academics is gonna take you a long, long way in life when your athleticism can. And because of that, I was able to play at Tammy U. Okay, and I was able to complete my degree there. And thankfully, since I graduated early, I did dual enrollment here in, in high school. I was able to actually, you know, graduate early as well with my bachelor's in college. And that allowed me to continue playing uh, the sport I love to play baseball, and I was able to get my master's too. I've always wanted to go and work, you know, uh, federally, and one of the big things that they touched, that Mr. Salazar touched, um, was service. I didn't think much about it when I was a kid, but as I grew up, I realized that those around you that, you know, did service to the community, you know, allowed the opportunities for me to be able to get the life that I kind of wanted, you know. When I, I'm actually from Rio Bravo, okay? I was born and raised and lived my whole life in Rio Bravo, okay? And I'm actually, as well, really good friends with Fernando Maciel and Cassandra Diaz. Really good, good friends, probably best, best friends at this point. And it's an honor to see that, you know, we're here at the same position, you know? All of us being League of Legends and, you know, getting recipients of this award. And it kind of just goes to show as well, guys, and I'd like to touch on that too, is surround yourself with people who are motivated who are ambitious, who want to get somewhere in life, okay? Because the best way I can tell you is, I'm pretty sure y'all have heard the saying by now. You tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you the type of person that you are as well. You know, and it, it kind of shows a lot that, you know, it's an honor that they're here too, along with me. You know, and touching back on the service, uh, service to country guys, is I've never met David Lee Espinosa, but the fact that I knew that he was from Rio Bravo, you know, kind of opened my eyes as well. And I actually put a flagpole that same day outside my house, you know, to kind of just remember every single time I wake up in the morning, you know, there's people out there that are giving the service to our community without us even asking for it, without even realizing it, you know? And it's because of that, that we just wake up every day, guys, and just, you know, try to be a little bit better than the day you were before, okay? And as well, as y'all can see right now on my chest, on my badge, I actually have a black morning van. And just recently I lost a really close friend of mine, you know, from the Department of Homeland Security. She was also a CBP officer too. Unfortunately, she tragically lost her life. Um, she was heading northbound to San Antonio. She was actually gonna head to Florida. And she was involved in a car accident. So I found that out maybe like about, you know, this past week on Saturday. Last time that I spoke to her was last Tuesday. And it must again, like I said, guys, adversity is probably one of the biggest things you're gonna face in life. This world is gonna knock you down a lot of times, but at the end of the day, you can't control what happens that's outside of control. The only thing you can control, guys, is your reaction to it. And when you see that reaction, a lot of times, you're gonna have better positive outcomes when you react to it in a positive way and you use it you know, to make something out of it. Okay, guys? So I just wanna say thank you to everybody. You know, thank you once again, faculty and staff and everyone here. I've been here on multiple occasions for career day, and it's always an honor and a pleasure to come here and speak to every single one of you guys, okay? Thank you.
Good morning, my name is Alexandra Doria, class of 2025 president. It is my privilege to introduce Mr. Maciel. Fernando Maciel, LBJ alumni, graduated top 10 in his class with a GPA of 4.05. Mr. Maciel was part of many extracurricular activities such as the National Honor Society, Health Occupations, Students of America, HOSA, and UIL. Mr. Maciel represented HOSA as its president and placed first in District 7 area competition and top seven in a nursing state competition. Also, he served as vice president of NHS his senior year, as well as the leader of the science UIL team. Upon graduation, Mr. Maciel was awarded the Mr. South Texas Scholarship by Senator Judith Zaffarini, the Masonic Lodge Scholarship, and a full ride to Texas A&M International University. At TAMU, Mr. Maciel graduated cum laude with a Bachelor of Science in Nursing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mr. Maciel continued to show his leadership abilities throughout his career by being the change nurse of the ICU unit from 2019 through 2020 to 2022. He also served as a cardiovascular ICU right now, RN, under the guidance of Dr. Arthur Santos. Currently, Mr. Maciel serves as Director of Nurses at Laredo Hospice. Outside of his professional career, he ventured into his entrepreneurship by opening a small cafe with his wife, Ms. Cassandra Diaz. Mr. Maciel continues to serve his community by volunteering with nonprofit organizations such as Smiles from Heaven, an organization that seeks to help children with cancer in medically un underserved areas, and Hero Sports a nonprofit that seeks to help military veterans of South Texas. Please help me welcome Mr. Fernando Maciel to the podium. Good morning, everybody. My name is Fernando, graduated class of 2014. Um, I wanted to touch on some of the points just like that I did. What I wanted to say, uh, mainly um, one of the things that helped me out a lot through high school is not to be afraid of failure. Right? Um, one of the things like that I said that you're going to be facing a lot in this life is you're going to keep failing in a lot of things that you do and you should not be afraid of it because they're going to make you a better person. Um, when I first started high school, one of my main goals was to be in the varsity soccer team. And a year, in my sophomore year, I broke my ankle during practice. Actually, no, it was during tryouts. So they broke my ankle in tryouts when I was trying out for the varsity soccer team. And that went out the window right away. So then after that, I started concentrating on my academics. I started trying out clubs. Um, I joined HOSA. I joined UIL, and, uh, National Honor Society, the student council as well. And by doing that, by, by diversifying your interests, you start finding the things that you like and the things that you don't like. When I joined HOSA, I realized that I had a thing for medicine, for the medical stuff. So I kept trying, I kept studying, and I kept uh, going to the meetings. I eventually became the president of HOSA. I participated in the nursing competitions and I won first place on Area 7, which is Laredo, Brownsville, and Corpus. After winning first place, I went on to a state competition where I ended up in the top seven in the state of Texas. And it honestly set the path for me to become a nurse, getting my bachelor's degree at TAMU. After that, I went on to work in the ICU at Doctors Hospital during the pandemic, uh, the COVID pandemic. Um, I became charge nurse in the in, um, Doctors Hospital. Um, after that, I was recruited to participate in the Open Heart Program mm -hmm. at, uh, here in Laredo, and I was under the direction of Dr. Arthur Santos and taking care of patients with open heart procedures. Um, and that's, you know, you hear about it a lot, but truly high school is when you set the foundation of what you're going to be interested in when, once you get out of high school and, and go to college. One of the important things is, like I said, not be afraid of failure. Diversify your interests. Try everything. You know, if you like golf, go into golf and practice golf here at the school. If you want to join student council, if you want to join UIL for science, for math, for debate, you know, um, trying all those different things will eventually uh, set you up in the path of something that you like. And again, don't be afraid of failure. 
because uh, through failure is how we learn, right? I want to thank everybody as far as the staff, the teachers, the counselors, and Ms. Ramon, uh, the faculty as well, everybody that invited us to this event. We truly appreciate it. And one of the last things I want to say is remember that even though you're just in high school, you're still part of a community. So always keep in mind how you could give back to that community because the community will give back to you. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Jorge Cáceres, representing Early College, and today I would like to talk about and introduce Mr. Jorge Castañeda. Jorge Castañeda is a 2015 graduate of Lyndon B. Johnson High School. His boxing career started when he was only nine years old. At age 12, he won his first amateur title at the Ringside World Championships in Kansas City, Missouri, followed by another two titles at ages 14 and 16, making that three titles during his amateur career. Shortly after graduating high school, Mr. Castañeda's amateur career became to an end after having completed 39 fights and winning three championships. On August 14 of 2015, he fought his first professional boxing fight. His professional career took off at the age of 18, building an undefeated record of nine wins, all coming by way of knockout. Mr. Castañeras landed his first UWBC Intercontinental Super Weatherweight title during his winning streak on February 10 of 2017. In December of the following year, he won the ABF USA lightweight title, succeeded by another ABF USA title in the super featherweight division the upcoming year. On October 30 of 2021, he fought an undefeated prospect for a WBC International Silver Super Weatherweight title in the O2 Arena in London, England. He won the title by a majority decision and brought back the belt to his hometown of Laredo, Texas. Mr. Castañeda's boxing record at present is 15 wins and two losses, with 11 wins coming by the way of knockout. He currently trains at Coachella, California, awaiting a date for his next fight. Please help me welcome Mr. Jorge Castañeda to the podium. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Mr. Jorge Casaneda could not be here uh, today with you all. He does send his regrets, but he also wants to congratulate everyone who participated with him at the dinner. Uh, Cassie and Fernie, he got, he got to hang out with him a little bit. Natalie was there too. Eric, we missed you, but we're, we're thankful that you are here today. And of course, the family of, of David and Ms. Palacio. So on behalf of Jorge Casaneda, thank you to everybody. He does want to let all students know that you must persevere with what your goals are like for you, not what other people want for you, but rather what you desire to do. Like you heard from our Jorge here, he did mention that Jorge Casaneda started boxing when he was just 12 years old. In fact, that's when he started winning. So he was very young, uh, already winning in his, uh, in his local fights, and it has taken him to other parts of the world that some people only dream of visiting. So on behalf of Jorge, follow your dreams, listen to your teachers, to your peers. He loves LBJ, he bleeds purple and gold, and congratulations to all.
Hello, my name is Kimberly Medina, Student Council President. This morning I have the honor of introducing Ms. Coleman. Natalie Coleman is a 2016 graduate of Lyndon B. Johnson High School. While at LBJ, she was a UIL competitor, National Honor Society Vice President, and a JROTC officer. She graduated as valedictorian and AP scholar with distinction. Natalie was one of 50 Terry Tradition scholars across Texas receiving a full ride scholarship. In 2020, she competed as she competed a bachelor's in civil engineering, a minor in Hispanic studies, and journal articles. Ms. Coleman served as scholarship chair for women in science and engineering and assisted in giving 10 scholarships to deserving graduate students. She is also the, the secretary of the Bill Anderson Fund, disaster researchers. She has traveled in multiple domestic conferences, studies aboard in Vienna, Austria, and Budapest, Hungary, and competed in independent projects in Santiago, Chile, and Delft, Netherlands. Ms. Coleman is passionate about promoting the next generation of students. She has mentored over, over 20 undergraduates volunteered for the, for the undergraduate research division and advocated for research funds and AURA scholars. She regularly, she regularly presents to K-12 schools with the belief that anyone can be a research Please help me welcome Ms. Natalie Common to the podium. Good morning, everyone. Can everybody hear me okay? Yeah, thumbs up, good. <laughs> um, first of all, I just wanna say thank you to everybody who helped in organizing this event. It has been very lovely coming back to my alma mater and I'm so privileged to be with you today. Uh, congratulations to my fellow award recipients. Um, I'm gonna sort of echo what everyone has been talking about in the form of starting with a story. So I am currently studying with my PhD in civil engineering, and my research projects are actually about disasters. So when I was a sophomore, Hurricane Harvey hit the coast of Texas. And at the time, me and a group of students decided to collect resources and funds to give to people who were impacted. And that kind of started my journey in disaster research and me trying to understand how people are affected in the middle of disasters. So my main research topic is to see how we can make resilient infrastructure systems. Now that word resilience is very important. Resilience means that after a disaster, these systems, now they're not perfect, but they're able to recover and go back to the way that they used to be, and sometimes even stronger after a disaster. And so even though I'm in the business of creating resilient infrastructure systems and making sure that water and power turns back on, I'm more interested in the stories of resilient people and being able to understand how those people are able to recover after a disaster. Now, I see it when people are able to prepare before, when they're able to collect food and water to make sure them and their families are safe, or afterwards where they're able to come up with innovative solutions to be able to be protected. And so, in my experience, I think the most important thing is that each and every one of you are able to be resilient and despite any obstacle that you might face, any disaster, you're able to recover from it. Now that might be that you are able to come back from a bad test or be able to apply to different colleges or a setback in your career, but at the end of the day, it's just very important to be able to continue forward. Now for me, the idea of resiliency is very important. I was somebody who remember calling home distress after the first year, really convinced that I was not gonna be able to finish my degree. But the important thing is having people around you who are able to see your potential and see that you are able to keep moving forward. And so I just wanna say that I'm so happy to be speaking to you today. I can see in the crowd that y'all have such bright futures. And if you ever have any questions about 
you know, applying to colleges or what you should do in your career, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I would be happy to help you in your journey. So thank you, and I just want to say thank you to my parents for being here, my sister, uh, my lovely nominator, Ms. Ramon, Mr. Salazar, um, and some teachers that were able to see that light in me, which was um, Ms. Janak, Ms. Cardenas, Ms. Vigil, and Mr. Rubio. So thank you all. Good morning, my name is Eric Galindo, and I represent Blissia. It is an honor to introduce Ms. Palacios. Sergeant Stephanie Palacios is a 2017 graduate of LBJ High School and was an eighth grader student of the month at Lamar Bruni Vergara Middle School. While at LBJ, she was an honor society and gifted and talented student. Also, as a senior at LBJ, she participated in Ms. Laredo Latina and won the title of People's Choice and first runner-up in 2017. Ms. Palacios joined the Army in 2018 and is currently a sergeant in the Army serving for the past five years. Sergeant Palacios is a patient administration NCO slash physical evaluation board liaison officer. She was recognized as a soldier of the month and soldier of the quarter and won second place for the soldier of the year. Sergeant Palacios took part in the Rim of the Pacific exercise, the world's largest international maritime warfare exercise where she earned a medal for participating. She is currently enrolled in college working on medical and billing coding certification and a degree in criminal justice. Sergeant Palacios is a single mom who is stationed in Honolulu, Hawaii, the dream place that she always wanted to visit. She enjoys traveling, cooking, dancing, adventurous trips, and spending time with her son and family. Unfortunately, Sergeant Palacios is currently deployed on an assignment and could not be here with us. Representing her is her younger sister, Alison Palacios. Good morning to everyone. It's an honor to be here and receive this recognition for my sister, Stephanie Palacios. I'm so proud of all her accomplishments and due to her active as a soldier stationed in Hawaii. She couldn't make it today at this time. At this time, she is continuing her education to earn a criminal justice while servicing our country. So believe in yourself and you can achieve your dreams. Stay positive and stay in school. Thank you. Last, but especially not least, it is my honor to speak about one of our fallen alumni. Lance Corporal David Lee Espinosa was a 2019 graduate of Lyndon B. Johnson High School. While at LBJ, he attended the Marines Laredo office for physical training. By August 2019, Mr. David Lee Espinosa traveled to the San Antonio Military Entrance Processing Station, METS where he completed his requirements and swore to protect and defend our country. He then attended the Marine Corps Recruit Department, MCRD, in San Diego, California for basic Marine training. While at MCRD, Mr. David Lee Espinosa worked hard to achieve his dream to become a Marine. He was assigned to the 2nd Battalion, Echo Company Platoon 2114. 
Due to a minor injury in November 2019, he then joined the 3rd Battalion, Kilo Company Platoon 3234, where he earned his ego, globe, and anchor, the official emblem and insignia of the United States Marine Corps. On January 20th, 2020, Mr. Espinosa was promoted to private first class, then transferred to the Marine Corps base camp at Pedleton in Oceanside, California, earning his place in the 1st Marine Division. By April 15, 2020, he completed his infantry training and was assigned as an infantry rifleman in the 2nd Battalion, 1st Marine Regiment, the Professionals. Mr. Espinosa continued training hard, and on October 1, 2020, he earned a promotion to Lance Corporal. After his advanced training, Lance Corporal Espinosa received orders for his first deployment to the Middle East. While still training in Jordan, he was redeployed to assist with the evacuation in Kabul, Afghanistan. Lance Corporal Espinosa fulfilled his duties by evacuating Afghans from the clutches of enemy insurgents. From his service to his country, he was awarded the Purple Heart Medal, Afghanistan Campaign Medal, Combat Action Ribbon, Global War on Terrorism Service Medal, National Defense Service Medal, Sea Service Deployment Ribbon, and Good Conduct Medal, and is in the process of receiving the Congressional Gold Medal. Please help me welcome Lance Corporal David Lee Espinosa's parents, Mrs. Elizabeth Dominguez and Mr. Victor Manuel Dominguez. Thank you and good morning to everyone. Congratulations. And thank you to everyone for, for honoring and giving the opportunity. Um, as a parent, what can I tell you? I'm sorry, I'm a little bit nervous. Um, I would tell you what I tell my kids. Go for your dreams, always. It doesn't matter. I mean, life is hard. It's always been hard, you know? As a parent, it's hard. So I can imagine you all the stress and everything that you think it's, you know, it's so hard. But always go for your dreams and never give up. Follow your dreams. And everybody can make it. It doesn't matter where you come from. And it doesn't matter how long it takes for you to achieve your dreams. Thank you. Now our alma mater, or excuse me, now our mighty wolf band will play the Lyndon B. Johnson High School alma mater and fight song. Will everyone please stand?
This concludes this morning's presentation. Our honored alumni will have the opportunity to visit our students and former teachers in, in their classrooms. We will meet our Louvre legend alumni and their guests for brunch in the Woos Bistro after the tour of the campus. Thank you for attending our 2023 Johnson Wolves League of Legends ceremony. Johnson students, you may exit the gym and report to class. Thank you.